Hello everybody, I'm Alicia Lockbaum, coming soon to a prop shop, possibly in a theater near you. I am also known as Griffin Lady Online. I love to create stuff. This is why I'm majoring in theater and in art. I like to begin as close to scratch as possible. I enjoy making my own air dry clays and learning new techniques and learning about tools that make it possible to get what I want out of the materials that I've been using. As my husband and I say, I wear the tool belt in my family. I've been handcrafting custom characters and creatures for people that find me online for nearly two decades, most recently via my Etsy shop. Sometimes I design them from scratch with very little definitive in input from the buyer, requiring many sketches for them to view and approve and send back. Other times I get very specific character requests, such as characters from cartoons or their personal characters from games. I begin working on the pattern to sew together test forms straight from there. Once those are approved by the, the customer, I begin the final plush in very expensive fabrics and other materials. Uh, Please pass these around so you can have a peek at some of the stuff I've made. So I wanted more. I've always used a variety of mediums, but I wanted to know how to do so in a more professional manner. So I went back to higher education at the age of 35. I didn't know what the end result would be yet, I just knew I wanted to do some sort of full-time art-related career something more alive than standard careers, something I could be proud of. While specific goals are good, staying open-minded to possibilities seemed wise. As an elective at uh, Lynn Benton Community College in Albany, I took intro to theater and found the practical application of art was just enchanting. I wound up getting to work on at nearly every prop that term and a couple of them I get to make all by myself. Like the telephone there, and the plates, and the hands on the vehicle, and the bottles, and the net. I actually specifically learned a very specific way of weaving to make that net, and then a very specific way to make it look a little screwed up like the drawings in Dr. Seuss's book. Um, I also had a hand in most of the scenery, and their rendition of Cat in the Hat was awesome, by the way. So I was hooked. Uh, that's the living I wanted. Uh, one of the recommendations while doing scenic painting and props was to take as many art classes as possible, learn the techniques that would make great props and scenery possible. Makeup class was one of my favorites. The The final we were to look like an elderly person who fell down nine flights of stairs and was turning into a zombie. That is the most awesome final I've ever had. I really like detail. Uh, details give the challenge that I love, and the more, it's just a really satisfying, fe satisfying feeling when a piece is done. I try to put humor in when I get a chance to, and I kind of think of you know, if someone laughs or smiles or just feels a little uplifted, it's a little vacation I just gave them. I tend to stick to lighter colors, and I like to convey a sense of peace and well-being. I like to zoom out for the full picture for several reasons. I have an odd sense of pity when I leave things out. Also, I feel like I've missed an opportunity when I leave the parts still unexplored. I really have to push myself to crop out those lovely outer details. Learning different techniques is added to my toolbox of skills. This is the only painting I've ever done with only palette knives. The bananas have the dominant objects encircled, keeping the eye in the center while the blocks balance it asymmetrically. Keeping the bananas distinct from the yellow paper on the wall was a good challenge. <coughs> I don't really have a preferred set of colors. I like variety. Without variety, what's the point of living? Bold subjects call for bold colors and high contrast. 
a lighter mood co gets lighter colors. Bottles and other clear translucent reflective objects are fun are a fun challenge. I might just be obsessed with the shinies though. I'm working on a collection at home of interesting glass objects amongst other things like decent fake fruit for still lives I could be working on during the summer and teaching my daughter all the stuff I've learned. The way the light bends and forms and deforms whatever's behind it or inside of it is what really makes it look believable, if you get it right. The clear, colorful, translucent glass is also a welcome challenge. I'd like to get to the trompe l'oeil standards uh, one day, and I'm happy to practice. Uh, my style tends to be pretty illustrative. I try to show detail and humor or tenderness in everything I make and when I have the opportunity. Like, I chose to do a, uh, <coughs> a fairy tale image in my uh, previous class at LBCC, honestly. I hole punched the holographic packaging from a toy and I made chain mail for the dragon to put in the painting and I just thought it'd be neat for Rapunzel to have a friend that brought her plushies to keep her company. Uh, the empty white space here was designed for some beasts, a poem by Pablo Neruda. The eye follows the creatures of the illustration all around and back to the poem. There's no escape from the poetry. In the second image, the audience is focusing on one cornered egg. Implied line f around the egg is leaving a white circle of the spotlight further trapping and bringing more attention to the poor terrified egg. The third is an earthy subject of feathers and wooden beads on a stark bit of scratch board. This was a culmination of some thoughts. All the debt that I was racking up, going to school, the money I needed for living, graduation coming soon. All this was swirling in my head, just draining the life out of me. So I sketched a little comical doodle of a vampire dollar bill, and I just kind of went from there. The bell shape was to show whoever sat in the chair in the middle how, how much, how money really is the apex predator. It's surrounding and draining you and is there really a choice to sit in that chair or not? Uh, learning about pre-technological methods of firing intrigued me on both the curiosity side and the frugal side. Getting to know the origins of methods seems to make things click in my brain. This coil-built critter was Raku fired, which would be fire until it glows, and then quickly transferring it, while it's still glowing, into a steel trash can full of sawdust and letting the lack of oxygen do its thing on the glaze. The pearlescent finish on one side was lovely. It's a little hard to pick up in the photos without being able to move it, but up towards the ear and down towards the tush, there's a little bit of kind of a oil slick almost. And I'd like to experiment more and find out how to get the whole thing like that. Throwing pottery was very relaxing, and I loved the way it felt when the balance was just right. The thickness of the walls supporting itself, the clay at the right consistency, and it all comes together and grows as it cycles around. It's kind of like Photoshop, how it clicks to grid, except not in an annoying way. In the amalgama amalgamation of several thrown pieces for one project, <coughs> I had attempted an abstract flower pot partly turning inside out, but I got a pleasant surprise when taking the photos and this sleepy grumpy fella faced pop out. Without any previous experience, each finished glaze was a surprise. Well, the unnamed tall object I made had mystery glazes I'd never used personally, which I really like how it looks like a white sand beach around the edge. Uh, the random, uh, the 
Sagar fire, which a box full of stuff that you burn around the cl the ceramic object. Uh, it had orange circles from the cheese poofs. It had one of my wisdom teeth that I'd had pulled out in the center. It had some iridescent turkey feathers around it. And in the detail picture at the top left corner of this image, you can see a little bit of the iridescence. Sculpture still has a lot left unexplored for me technique-wise. I find that very exciting. I have dremeled in wood, made two-part molds in both slip and resin, bent and woven wire, used forms to dry fibrous air-dry clays into organic shapes, and it's a blast. And obviously I have a thing for my sewing machine as well. The objects in this painting represent my hobbies, my family, some of my favorite books, my love for science fiction, fantasy, and whimsical things. The green dragon is actually the dragon you've been passing around, as well as the big lucky dragon's foot. Uh, all the items are meant to keep the viewer eye traveling within the painting, particularly the bold red dominant lucky dragon's foot bringing you back to the middle to explore another path. It's a busy life full of random stuff that I lead, creating a much brighter present and future. I can't stop doing art. I won't stop doing art. Art is life. Shoot for the moon and explore the stars. Thank you very much for your time. Anyone have any questions?